Okay, so I'm doing an update video on the Coleco Chameleon, which I briefly touched on in my previous video. Uh, this is the new retro 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit system, cartridge-based system that is coming out. I'm going to go through the whole history. I'm going to go through everything. I've got a lot of new updates to share. There is new information coming out on this system. You know, it's probably going to seem like every week right up until launch uh, that, that there's going to be new interviews happening all the time. This this system's getting a lot of hype. So I'm going to try to run through this real quick. I got a really good presentation for you. So pretty much the system is a, a remake of the old retro video game system that failed. This uh, system failed to get uh, cr uh, successful crowdfunding. They were looking for a uh, FD 1.95 million dollars and they raised just over uh, eighty thousand dollars I mean they didn't even come close the Ouya, yeah for example which I like that system they got uh, nine hundred thousand they were looking for nine hundred thousand dollars half of, less than half of what the what the retro VGS was asking so that was the first mistake but Long story short, it had a lot of hype and no delivery and a lot of backlash, actually, believe it or not. The system got bashed a lot and it was just too expensive and, and I'll get into that. So, Mo Hardware, Mo Problems. It's, it, that's, that's exactly what the problem was with Retro VGS, which, by the way, has now been rebranded as the Coleco Chameleon. So, the Retro VGS has teamed up with Coleco who have had their own problems in the past, you know, the ColecoVision was a fail, but it was, uh, you know, it was uh, revolutionary for its for its era. It just, it just, it just they, they, they messed up, they did the same thing. Price was too high, won't get into that. So what happened with the with this system? Uh, they were looking for a three to $500, you know, cheapest system, early bird prize was $300 for a system. Uh, special edition was going for $500 at those prices the system was competing directly with the Xbox one and the PS4 uh, It's just highly unrealistic. It was you know, the hardware wasn't it was completely inferior so uh, The the I guess the director now uh, Mike Kennedy said he takes responsibility for letting a guy named John Carlson the head of hardware for the old incarnation of the system which was the retro VGS lead the team toward bloated features and a sky high price that that thing had so many ridiculous features he basically said that uh, Carlson made the Rolls Royce of a system that no one would pay for and that's exactly what happened Kennedy says Carlson insisted on loading the system with costly and unnecessary design quirks that quickly drove up the price. Those included a six layer PCB that costs $100 to $150 on its own. Like that, that's, that's insane. Uh, it, it was based on the Jaguar shell and it will continue to be based on the sh Jaguar shell. But I mean, yeah, long story short, it, it was, I mean, yeah, I, I forgot to skip a slide here, but uh, another quote from uh, Mike Kennedy is it got bloated, it got expensive, then we started adding bells and whistles on top of that, and the price got ridiculous. That's exactly what happened. Ridiculous is a little bit uh, underrating exactly what had happened there. So next slide here, new design, fresh start. So they've gone back to the drawing board. With Carlson out of the picture, a new hardware team went back to the beginning. The new system will be refocused on the original vision of playing 2D sprite-based games like those you'd see in the 8-bit to 32-bit days, which was uh, the golden era of gaming, really. 32-bit uh, would be... You know, arguably still part of that era, but uh, I think it definitely was uh, anything past that. That was the late stage of, of what is now uh, considered to be the golden era slash is the golden era. Uh, there aren't a lot of production plants uh, cranking out new cartridges and solid state console shells these days. 
but Kennedy and his team have managed to track down the old industrial tools used to produce the original Atari Jaguar. They had to track these tools down, and they found them. Uh, currently, the tools are apparently being used to produce dental equipment, but anyways, they, they've, they've got their hands on the machine, and which is saving millions of dollars, by the way. Um, and so they can start cranking out the, the shells, and that's why they're using the the Jaguar shell, or Jaguar, whatever you want to call it. I, I say Jaguar, okay? Jaguar, same thing. Uh, so using those tools rather than designing and building new machines from scratch probably saved half a million dollars in the end, quote by Mike Kennedy himself, as he told a company called VentureBeat. If that means the final system bears a striking resemblance to the Jag Jaguar, that's probably just a bonus for many retro-minded collectors. I'm all right with that. Who wouldn't be? So, moving on. Costs slash price. The costs associated with the old retro VGS, which were sky high, have now been cut in half. Kennedy has promised a sub $200 price. Uh, preferably $150 is the end goal, uh, if possible, is what he said. A new crowdfunding effort uh, will likely be asking for a much more reasonable $250,000 to $300,000 price range, which uh, compare that to the almost $2 million price tag that they needed before. And there will be, uh, the crowdfunding is said to be going in place prior to the uh, prototype, I believe, it display coming out in February. So don't quote me on that, but that's what it sounded like. Because, uh, yeah, th that's definitely what they're going to be doing. So so keep an eye on Kickstarter, Indiegogo, whatever they're going to go with. Keep an eye on that. Uh, and I, I'm thinking they're going to raise a lot more money this time. They're, they're going to get that 300000 and maybe even 500000 $1 million. If the, if the OUYA can get $8 million, $7 million, I think uh, this system... With the hype it's getting now and the, and the changes that they've made, there's no reason this system cannot get at least $500,000. And and why not a million? So some people are saying it sounds like a big gamble with a cartridge-based system because cartridges ultimately disappeared, uh, not only because they limited game makers, but uh, because they were also so darn expensive to produce. Distributing games on cartridges are more... Uh, costly than than DVDs or uh, putting downloadable bits on a server you know steam uh, but Kennedy says they can get cartridges that will sell in the 20 to 30 dollar uh, range uh, perhaps a bit more for uh, a big box big license game so these are gonna be cheap games which is very reasonable and ain't nobody gonna be complaining about that and it also allows them to compete a little bit better with uh, you know existing first gen consoles or or uh, you know whatever's out there currently ain't nobody gonna pay a hundred dollars for cartridge anymore which back in the day that actually happened I remember uh, mace the the dark ages or something like that for the n64 that was a hundred bucks I wanted that game so many times and I could never get it because I just didn't have the hundred bucks you know, Diddy Kong Racing was selling for 70 bucks. Anyways, costs are uh, a lot cheaper today to produce cartridges, so that's why the price is going to be able to go down. Let's get on to the games. Everyone's been waiting for the games announcement. I'll tell you what's going on with the games, okay? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. So, so a lot of people are asking uh, why, why return to cartridges. Kennedy said there's a lot of reasons, you know, obvious, obvious uh, nostalgia. Cartridges also provide a durability and longevity factor you will not find in any other uh, system, really. I mean, Xbox, Xbox, uh, original Xbox, or even a 360, original Xbox. Good luck finding a working Xbox 20 years from now. It's not going to happen. Oh, what's that? You want to get a working Atari today? Oh, that's easy. Go on eBay. What, 9 out of 10 of them still work? This system, you know, this is going to be easily last for another 40 to 50 years anyways uh, that brings up uh, another factor is that uh, specific storage capacity for those cartridges uh, is still a little bit up in the air well the retro vts was originally talking about games up to one gigabyte 
that has been reined into a lower number closer to about the 100 megabyte range much much smaller which is by the way more than enough for a 16-bit style game however uh, there that does raise another problem though because games built in inefficient environments like game maker and, and unity uh, can bloat uh, the the megabytes required for a lot of games and a lot of the old games actually topped out around 48 megabytes so 100 megabytes is still a lot then there's also the the physical medium used for the game storage which is still being debated uh, adding extra storage capacity isn't tough if you use cheap SD card storage but untouched data on those cards lasts only a couple of years and therefore they're uh, looking for much longer retention times for chameleon cartridges which should be able to last uh, the collector you know decades go you know look at my NES Super Nintendo Sega Genesis collection right now those games ain't going anywhere anytime soon so that leaves us to the final the final I saved the best for last developers getting software makers on board is going to be key Kennedy said Kennedy says he's talked to dozens of indie developers that are, have expressed interest in putting their games on the cartridges as well as some major old school publishers who he says might be interested in creating sequels to beloved properties for the new system. Of course, many publishing houses have been doing just that for years in the form of digital downloads, example Mega Man 9. Double Dragon Neon and everything in between. However, that seals the deal. There are developers interested. What kind of sequels could we see? I don't know. Another Final Fantasy game. Uh, we could see some Yars Revenge for, you know, remake of Yars Revenge. Who knows? We could see some old rare Battletoads. How about some Battletoads going again? Double Dragon. Maybe Battletoads Double Dragon Part 2. Sega Genesis could. Or Sega could come out with a new Sonic game. I mean, this game would sell. This game would sell millions. People would be buying the systems just to get the new Sonic game. People would be buying the system just to get the new Final Fantasy game. What was the, the top rated Final Fantasy game in terms of music? Arguably best Final Fantasy game of all time. Is still Final Fantasy 3 for the Super Nintendo. Final Fantasy 6 in Japan. This the, uh, the the something about the music being played on that 16-bit, uh, what so-called inferior sound system, it just worked out perfectly. That 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 sound on the the uh, Super Nintendo for the music in Final Fantasy III sounds better than a live orchestra. Like it's just something about these old systems. So with developers on board. Uh, conclusion is that uh, Kennedy's own words it's clear that uh, this system has struck a chord positive negative whatever it struck a chord and it's getting hype and this 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 is going full throttle guys it's gonna happen it's gonna get done it's gonna be made and get get your money ready get your wallets ready and please like subscribe I'm gonna be giving the updates on the system I'm gonna be ordering the system I'll be getting the early bird system uh, and get ready for some developers. I mean, something's going to be announced. Games are going to be announced soon. So get ready for it.